and welcome to our service again this morning. We are just and in thy presence we do thank thee again for the opportunity that we've been given to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ as the only Saviour of sinners. We do just pray, Father, that we would know thy hand of mercy and help be upon us as we seek to just simply proclaim <coughs> thy dear Son. We do give thee the utmost thanks and praise in his precious and worthy name. Amen. You have a Bible, please. We're going to turn to familiar verse. <coughs> Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. <coughs> Now, Paul and Silas, they were proclaiming the Lord Jesus, and a lady who was a seller of purple, she was saved, and those that were around, there was also a damsel possessed with a spirit, um, and she was healed from that spirit, and the people who were her masters were not happy that their money and their way of making money had been stopped so now we are just going to go into this from reading from verse 20 and brought them to the magistrate saying these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. <coughs> and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in the stocks, and at midnight Paul and Silas praise, prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's hands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came, trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do? to be saved. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his House. Now we know that God will bless the reading of his precious word. Maybe verses that we have read on many occasions, maybe things that we've preached on here on many occasions. But again this morning, I just want to think of Paul and Silas. They were beaten, they were put into prison. They were brought into the inner prison. Why were they brought into the inner prison? Well, the reason they were brought into the inner prison because that would be the safest part of the prison. Because they were right in the centre. Secure. And that is what the prison guard was told, wasn't he? To secure them securely. His life depended on them being kept safe in that prison. 
they were beaten as we read and in verse 25 we read this Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God they praised God they prayed to God now people might think well that is really strange and odd isn't it why would they pray to God and sing praises to him when they were in the position that they were in it wasn't a very good position was it they had been beaten they had been put in stocks they were in the inner prison they would have been in pain they would have been in a bit of suffering and yet we read again it was at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God why because they trusted in God no matter what situation that they were in no matter the problems that they faced no matter the difficulties that they were upon they trusted in God and they sang praises to him and they knew and they believed that God was in control and he was and he is and what do we see here the prisoners heard them the prisoners heard them what a testimony that was to all the others that were there they saw that they'd been beaten they saw that they'd been chained up they saw that they were put in the inner prison and yet they were singing and praying to God because what they had was real they had a true faith and a true belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and it showed out it showed out and it showed out to all those that were there with them their love and their trust and their belief and their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that was so evident and as we read in verse 25 all the people heard it and they saw it including the chief prison officer and what do we find in verse 26 a great earthquake happened the foundations of the prison were shaken and all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed they were free they were free from the shackles that were upon them and do you know something they could have run they could have run they could have escaped they could have got out of there because of that earthquake everything was loose the doors were wide open and they could have gone out and we read about this keeper he woke up from his sleep and he saw the doors opened and just like you and I I'm sure if we were in this same position we would have thought exactly the same that is it they've all gone I have no hope I might as well die because that is what the prison officer here felt and thought I might as well kill myself because that's what will happen to me because all the prisoners will have gone But Paul cries out in verse 28 do thyself no harm for we are all here Wow do you know something there wasn't only Paul and Silas that were there all the prisoners were there all of them not one fled not one ran wow and i take it it was because of what they'd already seen what they'd seen he called for a light and sprang in 
came trembling. I'm sure he was frightened and scared and worried and wondered what on earth has gone on and fell down at their feet and asked a most important question. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Oh dear friend, they beat Paul and Silas. He put them into that inner prison. He chained them up. They sang praises to God. He heard this as the others did. And now when they had the opportunity to escape, they didn't. And he comes in trembling and asking a most important question. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? How can I be saved? I wonder, have you ever asked that question? How can I be saved? Well, do you know something? Before we can know God's salvation, we have to realise and accept that we are guilty in God's sight. Because if we don't think we're guilty and we don't feel that we have done anything wrong, we're not going to ask for forgiveness, are we? If we do something wrong and we to somebody, say somebody in society, we do something wrong and we go to them and say, I am sorry, forgive me. That is the only way someone can forgive or begin to forgive someone if they accept that they have done something wrong to start with. Have you ever thought about that? We've got to accept that before a holy and righteous God is that we have done wrong in his sight. Because if we don't realise and accept that we've done wrong, how can we know salvation? How can we be rescued from our sin? How can we be saved? We can't. We first have to come to the realisation that in God's sight and in God's eyes, we are lost. And our sin is separating us from God. And then, and only then, can we realise that the one who died on Calvary died for you and me, and we can be saved through him. We've got to accept him as our saviour and as our Lord. And that's what it says in verse 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. <laughs> this morning we've been thinking about promises and God's promise to come to come again. And it is a promise that is true and it is a promise that is going to happen. Well, do you know something, dear friend? When God says something, he means it and we can trust it and we can accept it. And the Lord Jesus Christ says this. Well, Paul and Silas said this about the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You will. We will be saved. But dear friend, we have to come to him. We have to turn to him. We have to accept him. And this is no different to what we say week after week. Because it's the same message. It's the same saviour. It's the same way. But we have to come. And we have to repent. And we have to believe. And we have to trust. It is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we become saved. It's through trust in him and no one else. Do you know something? This jailer here, he trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. He trusted in him. He trusted in him. He accepted him. Just think at the very beginning what happened. He beat them. He put them into the inner prison. He chained them up. And he left them. 
And what do we find now? He came trembling. He asked the most important question. What must I do to be saved? The answer was clear. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And he did it. He accepted and he trusted and he believed. How do we know that? Well, we know that through what we read next. Because you know something, this is important too. Because as we read that they said to the question, the answer to the question, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved from thy house. Paul and Silas continued in verse 32. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. They spoke to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what they did. And what do we read? That same hour he took them, he washed their stripes, and he was baptised. Baptism was that outward showing of that new life and that new trust that he had in the Lord Jesus Christ. He washed their stripes. He didn't only do that, dear friend. But what else do we see in verse 34? When he brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. <coughs> what a change in this man's life there was. He took them. He looked after their sores. He fed them. And he rejoiced, believing in God. Oh, dear friend, there is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents, over one sinner that accepts the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour and Lord. But he rejoiced in knowing God. He rejoice in salvation. I wonder, dear friend, can you rejoice today? Can you give thanks for that time in your life when you simply trusted in the Lord Jesus as your saviour? Has there been that time? Oh, the Bible goes on to tell us, behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Today is the opportunity that we have been given once again to accept him as our saviour and as our lord but what will we do with him what will we do with him oh do you know something the people they heard paul and silas they saw the th <clears throat> they saw the things that they went through they saw it all. The jailer came trembling at first. Came trembling, fearing for his life. But then went away glad. He went away rejoicing. Why? Because he believed in God. Oh dear friend. There is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents. I wonder, will that be you today? Will you simply repent? Will you simply turn to him? Will you simply, just where you are now, accept him and take him for yourself? He wants to save you. He loves you. He died for you. He's made it all possible that you can be saved and that you can be rescued from your sin but you have to come to him he won't force himself on you it's a choice we have to make and every one of us has that choice every one of us makes a choice with what we will do with him what will your response be? 
Will you accept him? Or will you continue in the way that you always have, with your back turned away from him? Shall we pray? Father, we ever thank thee and bless thee for the time we've been able to spend together in thy presence. We do just, Father, continue to look to thee for help and guidance. We do look to thee for the rest of the day, God willing, in thy will. We do just pray for one another. We thank thee again, Father, for the time we've been able to spend together. We do pray for salvation. We pray for any who are not yet saved, that they would come to know the Lord Jesus as their own personal saviour. We do give thee the utmost thanks and praise now. In his precious and worthy name. Amen.